people then not take the time to be not seen to be working, not seen to be busy, because sitting, thinking, sitting, deliberating, questioning is often perceived as, what are you doing? You're not working. Where actually that, that concept and that mantra we use a lot of slow down to speed up actually makes you work far more effectively. The outcomes are far more efficient because you took that time. You weren't rushing into things. You weren't reacting blindly. You were taking the time to have that moment of mindfulness, as you said, 10 minutes, 10 seconds, 10 hours, all relevant given the context. But by doing that, you and those around you have taken that time to communicate, which is what this is all about, to understand, to listen to the different inputs from left and right of you, below and above, then assess, do the analysis, and then make that decision where you step forward next, rather than blindly stepping off and walking into a machine gun post or off a cliff. But I think, as you said, it's got to be a shift in mindset from the top because we still see, I call it the cosh of speed. Everybody you talk to is under the cosh of speed. It's the number one metric, and it's the number one thing that everybody is measuring themselves to because that's what is measured on from above. Well, let's go back to Mr. Musk. I mean, let's, 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 you know, let's go back to Elon with, with Twitter. It, it, you have to. I mean, we, you know, we're at that time of the year, and we, we have to deal with this. But he just fired a whole bunch of people based on number of lines of code that they had produced within X amount of time. I can't remember if it was three months, six months, a year, but they went in back, they looked at an algorithm and said, okay, if you haven't produced X amount of lines of code, you're fired. Here's the thing. You're rewarding sloppy, bloated code. You know, the, peop the people that don't know how to program well, the people that just sit there and are, no offense, the code monkeys that are just putting this sloppy, bloated code together are getting rewarded while the people who actually sit there and say, wait a second here, what are we really trying to do? Let's map this out. Let's figure it out. Let's, let's actually sit there and then create this, you know, elegant, simple code that can do in 200 lines yeah. what somebody else might take in 2000 exactly. lines Quality over are quantity. being fired. And yep. what sense does that make in any company? And what well, message does it send? And that's the thing is, you know, now you're getting into another one of my pet peeves, which is which is measuring the wrong things mm -hmm. and 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 blindly using metrics uh, as a simple way of, of, quote unquote, leading rather than thinking. And there's so many examples of this in business, you know, where people come up with these arbitrary systems to make business decisions. And they, and, and they never work. You know, one of my, one of my, one of my favorite, because it's my least favorite is forced ranking. And, you know, there's so many companies where forced ranking has been an absolute debacle, but I think the biggest one has been Microsoft was Microsoft when they implemented it, you know, and, but, but I, I know more about what happened when Ford implemented it in the early two thousands. And, you know, you get a situation where you have 12 great people on your team. And you've got one guy who's, you know, not a great engineer, you know, but 11 gals and guys who are doing a phenomenal job. But you've got to, you got to force rank them. So now you, the, you've got to put a third of them as underperforming. Okay. Well, you got the one guy, that's not a problem, but now you, now you, now you've got to get three others who are underperforming. But, Whether they are or they're not, but there aren't any. There aren't three others that are underperforming. Exactly. So you 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 agonize as a frontline manager and come up with your three, and and then you have to identify four that are that are outstanding. Well, you've got a couple who are better than everyone else, but most of them are pretty good. So now you have to arbitrarily pick two out of the out of the the evens to elevate. And what happens is, well. A, you just lost three great engineers because the, the ones on the bottom are going to get piked. And you just destroyed the morale of, of the eight that you have left because now everyone's like, why, why was she, you know, rated above me when I did just as good? Why was he rated below me when he does just as good as the rest of us? You know, and it just destroys morale and it destroys talent. And it's a substitute 
for actually leading. Well, and here's, let's take that to another level with sales departments. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a sales guy who brings in top dollar, you know, right. the, the top line dollars are huge. They're enormous top line dollars, but he creates chaos or she creates chaos in their wake. Mm -hmm. You know, operations yeah. is scrambling. Procurement is scrambling. Shipping is scrambling. Uh, the timelines are tight. The, the, the jobs are impossible. The person just sits there goes, look, not my problem. I'm selling this. You figure it out. And all of a sudden, those great top line numbers right. become these minuscule little bottom line numbers once all the additional costs are built in. But that person gets huge commissions. Their boss gets huge commissions. Mm -hmm. The leadership gets their, sh you know, sees the share price go up and therefore their bonus checks go up. So that person is rewarded time and time again for creating chaos and people are quitting left, right, and center because of the, you know, the actions of this person, but they're seen as a top salesperson where somebody else may be doing three quarters the amount of money that this person is doing, but it's far more profitable. It's far more aligned with the business units. It's far, you know, the timelines are more reasonable, but they're not getting rewarded as well because they're not bringing in the, the same top, yeah. you know, top line numbers. It, it ties so, back to the busyness, doesn't it? And the big numbers that people are seduced by, you know, technology, big numbers, people looking busy. Three things mm -hmm. that every, I won't use the word leader, every senior manager looks for in their team and if you tick those three boxes, you're top of that bell curve because that's what they want to see. People play the game and give them that. But as we say, you know, what they don't see is the wake left behind them of an absolute mess and disenfranchised people, reduced cost, you know, because of the mess they've made and people leaving because of that superstar or perceived superstar who seems to be getting away with it constantly. And there's nothing worse for somebody to see those behaviors supported than chastised, because that's the easiest way to demoralize your teams and drop the morale. Thank you for tuning in to The Thinking Leader. Check the show notes for more information about the topics covered in this episode there. You'll also find a link to our free assessment. Click on it right now to find out if you are a red team thinker with a red team culture.